Great, thank you. And um, good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for the intro. And yeah, me and my colleague Izzy, we're going to be talking all things repurposing this morning. Um, so I'm going to start with a really short, small background on Alandi. Um, as it was just mentioned earlier, we've got um, a really diverse portfolio in the UK. So we've got over 33 assets under management. It seems to be growing by the month at the moment. And they're across the UK. So from Cornwall up to Scotland, um, all of our assets are town, city or district centres and form a core part of that local centre. Um, I think increasingly importantly, 90% um, of our assets house local facilities and form a crucial part of the local community fabric as well. Alongside this, we've got lots of lettings, we've got some stats up there, numerous JVs, which I'll be coming on to later, this is increasingly important. And actually a key focus for us is ensuring that community groups are supported. That's a key focus for our portfolio as well. Um, so a bit about the challenge um, and what we see as the opportunity before we launch into what Izzy is going to come on to, which is data and how we use it. And then I'm going to finish on themes around repurposing and regeneration from a development perspective. Um, so the challenge, I think everyone here will be well versed on the significant challenge facing town centres. Um, I think the last eight months particularly have really accelerated the structural change that was already ongoing over the last five, six, seven years. Um, this has been accelerated dramatically. Um, and also we've been seeing in terms of um, consumer behaviours um, that is having a direct impact on the built environment. And we'll be coming on to that a bit more later. UK wide um, and locationally to varying degrees, there is a significant oversupply of retail. And this has only got worse over the last eight months. Um, and with that, we're seeing increasing polarization um, and also the purpose of places, which again, we're going to outline in more detail, but this has significantly shifted in a lot of instances, but also needs to shift. Um, so we actually see this as, um, oh, and also in terms of perception as well, a lot of these places really require a perception shift. So not only as a place to live, um, but actually just a place to have fun and spend time as well. So how do we achieve that? And we'll be coming on to some examples later. Um, and in terms of the opportunity, um, although there are some significant challenges, we actually see this as a real opportunity. So data, how can we use data to really get under the skin of a location and ensure that decisions are purpose driven? This is going to be increasingly, increasingly important. Um, we've got a real opportunity now to rethink how our spaces can accommodate multiple uses throughout the day. So how do we design in that flexibility from the outset is going to be really, really important. And also, how do we use data to, I've mentioned catalyst schemes on the slide, how do we use data to establish where um, interventions should be located so they can have the biggest impact? It's going to be really, really important. And also the ongoing management. I think often this is overlooked. And actually, if we're thinking about regeneration and um, solutions that are sustainable as well, it's not a build and they will come approach. Um, the built environment alone can't solve it. And actually, we need to be thinking about user experience, ongoing management to ensure that the change that's delivered actually then lasts for the long run. So in terms of our approach, and I think there is a general consensus and recognition that partnership is going to be fundamental to deliver the change that's required in our town centres. However, this can look really different depending on the approach taken. Um, we've outlined this infographic, which is the approach that we take, um, which is really important to us. Um, at the outset, we start with insights, that's data. Um, Izzy's going to give us more detail, but Yes, we explore market trends, catchment demographics. However, importantly, we really delve into perception, um, local, who are the local community, who are the local stakeholders, um, how are people behaving and how are people interacting with the location. That then br brings us on to the engagement. So how do we align the objectives and actually build the ownership within the local community and stakeholders as well, ensure that there's a sense of belonging, once the project, whether it's repurposing or full-blown development, 
is off the ground is going to be key to its success that you've really got that buy-in um, and then also in terms of the design response how do you ensure that the design response aligns with the purposes but also really pushes the boundary of potential as well so we think the first two stages are really key to ensure that that design response really does that whilst also optimizing the existing uses and maximizing value as well and then in terms of the overall partnership so what does this delivery partnership approach look like? Um, will, it will all fall out of the first three stages, um, but you need to ensure that the approach not only delivers the change required, but also ensures that you've got your processes, your governance, and all of your operations in place to ensure that effective ongoing management and that kind of regeneration, whatever the impact of your repurposing project is, is maintained and sustained as well. So I'm going to hand over to Izzy to talk through the insight side of things in more detail. Thank you, Holly, and good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to spend the next five to ten minutes talking you through why it's so critical that we ground all repurposing projects really deeply in not just data, but actually a holistic um, insight approach to ensure that places work not only now but in the future so kicking things off i think you know we can all agree that actually problems facing uh retail probably predate covid um and you know certainly a piece of research that we did at alandi in conjunction with caci in 2019 and um, proved that fact um we were able to establish that 49 percent of places so nearly 50 percent of locations in the UK that had an element of retail had some sort of oversupply. Now that equates to a total of 17% of retail oversupply across the UK, which is a huge, huge number of uh, retail floor space and, and retail units that don't necessarily need to exist um, either today or, or, or in the future. And in conjunction with that, we saw, again, pre-COVID levels of footfall, um, occupational levels, undeniably on a downwards trajectory and that's that's got even worse in the last couple of months so since march footfall across the uk has seen a decline of about 41 and a half percent so that's march to, to to october um obviously that that improved in the kind of later months but it's only going to see a further decline as at today um and there are only an estimated eight out of ten shops having reopened um after the june 15th easing of regulations where shops could reopen. Again, a huge risk in terms of shops remaining closed um, as of today and what that's going to hold in the future. And actually before today, if we were looking forwards, um, we calculated that about 47% of retailers were at significant risk of failure. And that's gonna have a huge potential impact on retail locations nationwide, both in terms of town centre and high street vacancy, but actually also having a knock on effect for the remaining non grocery retail that remains in situ. So the shape of retail still really uncertain in quite a large number of towns and cities across the UK. In order to really successfully navigate our way through the challenges that Holly mentioned in her previous slide. Through that lens of a reimagined and repurposed space, it's really critical for us to understand a place's purpose and its prospects through the eyes primarily of its users. So thank you, Holly, for switching to the next slide. So from our perspective, the need to understand um, the bigger picture and take a holistic approach to repurposing is, is really, really critical. So that's actually whether you're repurposing a singular asset or a really substantial site. Um, success is going to hinge on understanding how its current and actually future use, importantly, aligns and integrates with its locality. So taking a singular approach isn't necessarily going to ensure that you ingrain that repurposing strategy in the wider area that really fits the purpose of that space. So repurposing of retail space um, and actually ultimately, you know, the goal of introducing those mixed uses is going to be predicated on finding a mix of new uses, which is really viable and deliverable. From our perspective, the first part of 
that puzzle um, is very evident through evidently through the assessment of current retail floor space provision, uh, retail and leisure catchments, housing need assessments, social infrastructure, um, business use, as well as understanding demand that comes from various kind of community groups or public institutions, universities, hospitals, public sector, etc. Now, understanding that at local and regional level um, is really going to help you emphasize the creation of a narrative for the future of a place by drawing together all of those strands of evidence to really establish an area's purpose. And that purpose is gonna provide you with a framework within which you can begin to identify a place's current and future needs. That will then go on to inform how and why and what retail repurposing should look like. And that's going to be critical to ensuring that plans for town centres or urban spaces, however big or small, are really future focused. Next slide, please, Holly. Although I mentioned it's really critical to understand that bigger picture and approach it from a really holistic perspective as we all understand and I think you know COVID has made this even clearer no two places are the same so actually really understanding and getting on the skin of what makes each location unique is going to be really success really critical to ensuring successful repurposing of retail and I think you know, we can all agree that the differences that are so inherent in our town centres mean that having a really tailored and bespoke approach is going to be essential for each location. And that comes with building an understanding of the purpose of a place, what's unique, what works, what could be improved, and that will ultimately help identify the attributes of a place that are going to contribute to its future success and what we can build on and what we can try and work through to alleviate some of the challenges being faced. And that should be complemented by an understanding of the way that places function, which are going to include the mix and distribution of floor space and land uses, um, granular understanding of current occupier supply, success and vacancy, um, an analysis of the current retail function, which absolutely is going to form a critical part of understanding what is likely to remain in the future, what's needed, what might be missing, and crucially, what can be repurposed to other uses. But also then local and regional competition. So where else do people go to shop, work and play? How do people arrive, depart and get around a centre when they're there? So how do they interact with the space? the quantity and the quality of the public realm and public spaces and then an understanding of kind of unique cultural historic and heritage attributes that are going to again contribute to a place's purpose and provide some understanding of what the real kind of usps of that location is and all of the above is going to help shape the brief within which you can look to right size retail and identify opportunity areas that would be suitable for repurposing redevelopment now we've talked about the under, the critical um, the, the, the critical um, understanding of a place and how central that is to really shaping a brief, but actually central to deciding how to manage, repurpose, or redevelop a place is the deep understanding of that place's purpose to the community it serves. Since March, town centres have seen a renewed focus on localism. Um, we've seen shrinkage of catchment radiuses of about 18% nationwide. Um, so certainly, there is no substitute in terms of really understanding how to shape a place than understanding the visitor's catchment area, spending power, growth projections, and a whole host of other visitor behaviour and characteristics. <laughs> Town centres serve a real diversity of, of interests. Um, so gaining a really deep understanding of the way that communities are going to use both a place in a local or regional context is really critical. So while having a desktop based approach is brilliant, 
there needs to also be a supplement for that insight that comes from a real personal perspective of either the residents or the visitor catchment that are going to use that place. And while there is certainly a huge aspect of that in terms of um, planning and in terms of design, and that will come very much through local engagement with key stakeholders um, and planning consultations. There's also a large data set that could and should be interrogated as part of gaining that in-depth insight into human behaviours, patterns, wants and needs that you may not get from having relatively small community engagement groups with stakeholders that may or may not have a, a bias towards their own need and their purpose. So in order to do that, um, you not only need to have a detailed understanding of demographics, um, an understanding of who shops there, where and why, and then an insight into how visitors use town centres, but actually getting even further under the skin of visitor behaviours by developing an understanding of where people are going, what visitors are doing when they are in the town centre, the identification of different visitor types and their separate motivations for visiting a space, and then actually really crucially, who is not using the town centre and why. And on top of all of that as an umbrella, in order to ensure that any development or repurposing is going to be really future focused, um, there needs to be an element of being able to map and anal analyse dynamic visitor behaviour. So not just at the beginning of a project, but actually understanding how the repurposing has impacted visitors, either positively or negatively. And that's going to ensure that you can make really agile town centre development and management decisions. So taking that holistic and bigger picture, bigger picture approach to insight level repurposing is not only going to be useful to help de define and um, articulate a brief or an understanding of how a site should be repurposed, but it's also going to be really critical to help inform ongoing decisions. So that could be town centre management, asset management, investment strategies, um, an understanding of transport infrastructure networks, uh, marketing and community outreach. Again, not just now, but in the future. And along with kind of providing that framework within which you can kind of test and impact, uh, sorry, test and measure the impact of interventions um, is really going to ensure that you harness a really successful development in the future for users and that's become even more essential to to reimagining our places where we can no longer to be honest really look to past models for what good looks like um, the challenges and the change that we're facing at the moment is undeniably the once in a generation um, and taking that holistic future gazing approach to repurposing town centres is going to ensure that repurposed retail is not only going to survive today, um, but actually in fact thrive tomorrow. Great, thanks. Um, so once you've got the data and a lot of the background analytics that Izzy's kind of explained and talked us through, how do you then use um, that to harness the potential of the place and deliver the correct repurposing scheme? I mentioned earlier that ultimately the built environment's not going to be able to solve a lot of the challenges alone. However, if you've got a scheme that is really aligned to the needs of the local community, we really think it can help alleviate some of the issues. Um, partnership is going to be key. Um, increasingly, we're seeing this um, between public and private sectors. And we are seeing that local authorities are starting to prioritise their local centres more than ever and really understand that intervention is critical. Um, also, when we're creating these resilient, sustainable, flexible places, what is the right approach? So could this be smaller scale repurposing? And I've got some examples coming up because I think that's quite good to have a conversation around. And it can also inform the Q&A session that we've got later. Um, so smaller scale repurposing projects or to full-scale repositioning, master planning, and kind of comprehensive redevelopment strategies. What is the right approach? Um, and there's different ways that you can go about these. 
So in terms of some of the ingredients for a successful project and how we go about ensuring that the design, the uses and the end operation are all relevant, we often find that where there is genuine and relevant amenity, footfall and spend is much more robust. Um, although in terms of design and kind of operational structure, I've mentioned before, needs need to be flexible and adaptable. If you get the anchor right, so although you need to have that flexibility, if you really get that anchor right, it creates routine and also regular visits, which are going to be key um, in pulling people in and improving dwell times as well. Um, and how do you then incorporate the community spaces and the sustainability features as well? It's crucial to get that as part of the project. And then in terms of the ongoing management and operation, which we've both talked about, ensuring that this is partnership focused um, and that ongoing active ma management is a priority. Um, so whether that's in terms of transparency or whether that's in terms of your landlord and tenant relationships as well, is going to be really key to the success of these projects. So some examples. Um, so we've got a number of um, repurposing examples across our portfolio and a couple outside of our portfolio as well. Um, these stem from kind of health to co-working within our portfolio to re-anchoring schemes to hotels and residential. I've put two examples at the side. So um, the first is the Pentagon Centre in Chatham and we are working towards the delivery of a 30,000 square foot health centre as part of the centre. This is not only going to re-anchor the scheme and pull more people in and a wider um, amount of the community that previously wasn't using the shopping centre, but it's also going to reduce the amount of retail space in the shopping centre um, and work towards right-sizing that amount. We also got the Marlins shopping centre in Southampton where we've delivered a co-working space as part of the overall offer. Um, again, re-anchoring the end of the shopping centre and also reducing the amount of retail. It's been a really successful scheme um, that we're looking at other locations where we can um, roll out that initiative. And then I've got some other examples. So although in some cases, let's say a smaller scale repurposing perhaps an element of a scheme might be the correct approach. Actually, sometimes a complete rethink and overhaul is required. Um, Southampton is a really good example of this, where we're developing a master, well, we have developed a master plan, but it's, it's going to be constant iteration, but considering the full demolition and rebuild. So we're promoting over 500 residential units here, a dramatic reduction in the retail got about eight or nine percent of what we've got currently there in terms of retail on a per square foot basis um, and then instead of having retail we're really thinking about how we make sure that the ground floor is really active so we're using workspace health services and amenities to do that that's the role that retail used to have and we're now looking at alternatives to really activate that ground floor this is a scheme in um, Greater Manchester in a town centre, which interestingly, we're working in conjunction with an adjoining landowner to do a master plan of two shopping centres, which sits side by side in a town centre that arguably doesn't even need to have one shopping centre in terms of the amount of retail that the location can support. Um, it's really radical in terms of the approach that we've undertaken, but it's right for this location and it's what should be delivered. I've got a plan underneath showing how much retail was in the location. It's the yellow plan to the bottom. Um, and then what we're promoting above, which is the master plan. Um, key for this project has been changing the perception of the town centre. There's very little of the population currently living in the town centre. How do we bring people back in, but also how do we make it a place that people want to come and live in? It's got really good connectivity to central Manchester. Um, so we're exploring different types of tenure of residential, for example, build to rent um, and also private market as well. And then the third example is a project in Great Yarmouth, um, where this is, we're looking at significant demolition of the shopping centre, but not full demolition like the other two examples, but re-anchoring the shopping centre with a civic facility. Um, this is quite an interesting example where we're working with the local authority and exploring how themes of 
education can really sit alongside retail and both work um, to the advantage. So as part of this, we're reducing the amount of retail by 60%. Um, and we're also exploring how we might introduce a transport hub into the scheme as well. So it's a really exciting project um, that we are pushing ahead with. Um, so that's it, but, and thank you for joining us. Um, but I think we've got a Q&A session at 12. So any questions that you've got on anything that we've discussed or any of the case studies, um, we'd love to have them. Thank you.